divorced or single because you're widowed or you've never been married, you're single, but your significance is not in your status. Come on, say my status really don't matter with God. It, it really don't matter. Society tries to put different weights on different ones. And so I'm not going to dive into any of that on today. We have... Uh, designed for you today a tremendous opportunity with a powerful man of God, a dear friend and brother who I've known for years, for years, for years. I mean, he go way back. He real old. Um, but I found him to be a, a genuine brother who loves the Lord. Uh, he loves what God has assigned for him to do. And as we were unpacking our significant singles opportunity for this month and beyond, uh, Lady Lo and I, we said, well, let's, let's open up our, our local uh, session with Elder Nathan Salter. And so without further ado, I want to present to you uh, my friend and my brother, Elder Nathan Salter. Will you receive him by saying amen? He's here today. How's everybody doing? Also, it's so good. I like to see a lot of the familiar faces and people that I've, I've known here. Such a blessing to have you guys here. So who in here is excited? Really, who in here really ready to learn some good stuff about singleness? All right, who in here like being single? Okay, oh, Joe, oh Lord, uh-oh, a couple of them hands. <laughs> wrong with <laughs> who in here is like I, I I just gotta get married I if I don't get married I'm gonna die is, is that is that oh they nobody at that level but you you kind of like if it's the right person you would make that transition okay well that's a that's a good thing so I I tell you today we're gonna talk about some cool things and I'm gonna share some of my personal experiences with you and um, I hope that it really be a blessing to you I want to first thank God for Pastor Lowell because this man of God is awesome he is he is tremendously awesome, and I just thank you, Pastor Lowe. He is a true brother to me. I, I, I learned so much from just observing him and watching him and just listening to his wisdom, years of experience. I, so I just want to start off by saying, um, you know, I, I, I've been married now. I'll be going on three years, and my beautiful wife is out there at the table. And so I am not here to give you marriage advice. So just know, this is not, I'm not here to say, oh, well, when you get married, you got to, that's the man to go see for that, because he got the experience for that. <laughs> he know what I'll go to. I will give you the information about the journey passing through to marriage, because there was, um, I got married in my 40s, and um, I could tell you a lot of things. I've ex I was out there with you. I know what it's like. <laughs> I know what it's like. <laughs> I know your struggles, trust me, I know it. Especially when you know that you have value and you don't want to settle. I think sometimes that's the greatest challenge. I felt that was my greatest challenge is when you know your value, but then you're looking around like, is there anybody on that level of value to connect with? This is why we got to trust God. Because only he can he knows where that person is at your level for me i had to go to dominican to find mine <laughs> that could be some of our problems in here uh, you looking in buffalo and that could be your issue <laughs> you may have to take a road trip to pennsylvania yeah you may have to go to africa to ukababa <laughs> You know, <laughs> you may have to go to, I mean, I'm just telling you. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm glad you said that because it's true. It's true what she said uh, because my wife didn't come here looking for me. I went there looking for her. You know, I, I truthfully, no, I didn't even go there looking for her. I went there going on assignment and purpose. And in doing God's will, I found my blessing. So, so I'll, I always start off with the analogy that I use about the $20, and I, I share this analogy, and it's really helped men a lot more than the women. And that analogy is, you know the scripture says, he that find a wife find a good thing? Um, I used to think, when I was single, I used to think that means just go out and start dating. Just, just go find somebody. And I realized that is not what the scripture really means. What the scripture really means is, you find your purpose, you find your 
focus of what God called you to do. And as you're pursuing that, you will be walking, and then next you know, you say, ooh, look at that, $20 I just found on my way to what I'm supposed to do. That's what he that find a wife, not he that just stopped, abandoned his assignment and start looking. Well, we thank each and every one of you for being here, but, and I tell you, I promise we are going to have a good time. So we're going to jump in. Hope y'all ready. Um, I'm ready to, I am so ready and full and to be a blessing to you. So I hope you guys are excited. So let's bow our heads real quick and then I'm just going to pray God's blessings. And Father, I thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Lord, I pray that you, Lord God, give those here, Lord God, the word that you have for them. Let them be encouraged in their journey. Lord, I just thank you right now for this opportunity to be able to represent you in Jesus name. Amen. And I, I want to say, I truly thank God for that beautiful woman in the hallway. Am I blessed, amazing, what? <laughs> she is so much. I thank God for her. Amen. So, all right. So let's get to, uh, we're going to talk about, uh, I want to kind of just highlight certain things from each of the chapters for you, okay? I'm going to let you do the homework and read the book yourself. Uh, some of you have already may have already read it, but I think it's good to maybe, if you do have the copy already, definitely go back and reread it because there's... Um, it's funny, I even looked at it not too long ago and I was like, man, I forgot I put that in there. Like it was, it's stuff is always fresh, okay? So um, why did I choose seven things? Well, before I wrote it, it was really because I began to do a survey in my life. Um, I really struggled early in my ministry because I didn't understand it was a lack of understanding. I knew I wanted to do what God called me to do, but I didn't have an understanding about relationships. I didn't understand. Uh, I just knew I was kind of from the old school of, if you called to ministry, you better just get married. It was just like, you just, you better get, you, you, like there was no, you know, pray to find the right person. It was just, you just better find somebody and get married because you'll be, you know. So I, but when something happened, we had a Bible uh, school at our church and, I don't know what it was. I know it was the Holy Spirit, but something said to enroll in the marriage and family class. I was there to study more the the theology, the um, like books of the Bible and things like that. But I studied this marriage and family class. And so for anybody at New Beginnings, if when when a pastor and first lady is giving marriage, go get them nuggets. I'm telling you, that was the greatest insight because when I sat in that marriage, it was a class full of married couples. It was about 20 married couples and I'm the only single person in this class. I was in my early 20s and I had a strong desire to get married in my early 20s. And after I went to a couple of those classes, Pastor, I'm gonna be honest with you, I said, I can wait. <laughs> I ain't rushing. I mean, I saw couples fighting in there. They were yelling at each other, and, but they made the class that way to help them. So it wasn't like a negative to the couples. It was, this class was designed for couples to really talk about the real issues. I just happened to be single, and I thought I was gonna hear about, you know, how you find a nice one, and you know, how, you know, you know I was, it was completely opposite. It was, it was about what they, the issues, and so that started this thing in me of, what is causing, then I started seeing that the divorce rate was getting higher and higher. So I started saying, what is it about what I want to get into that's making everybody want to get out of? And I said, I need to start, instead of me wanting to dive in, if, every, if, we, came, if we all walked outside and we saw 20,000 people running down Genesee this way, flying, wouldn't something in your mind be wondering what they running from? It's natural. So I had to say, why is everybody leaving marriage? I had to ask the hard question. It's a hard question. Why are they leaving? And this came to my pursuit. I talked to over 200 couples before I wrote this book. And I narrowed it down to these seven things. These were the seven common things that every last one of them said, work on this, work on this. Try to do this before you get married. Try to do, they were honest and I, and I, I highlight these couples. I didn't say their names, but I honored them because if they didn't give me the raw truth, I probably wouldn't have had the wisdom to know these seven things. So I thank God for those couples. So let me um, start by saying, 
I started the book and I, I narrowed it down to seven things, but I opened it up with an introduction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little bit of the introduction. I'm going to give you a little bit of chapter one and chapter two, and then we're going to take a little break, and then that's where we're going to eat, and then we're going to continue our chapters. Would that be okay? And you can have your food at the table and enjoy us. All right, so in the introduction, what I talk about is process. This was the thing that I really discovered. Just because you have a desire for something don't mean you are prepared. So I had a strong desire in my early 20s, but I was so unprepared to have the thing that I'm desiring. So let me give you a perfect example. I use the analogy in the book, and you're going to read it about uh, the Honey Nut Cheerio analogy that many people told me was a, it really hit home for them. And this analogy came when I was at a conference speaking, and, I, and that morning session, I was at breakfast, and I just took a bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios, and I was ready to you know, eat it. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me. He says, look at your bowl. And I looked at the bowl, and I'm like staring at my bowl of cereals. I'm like, okay, what is this? And all I heard was, look at the two substances in the bowl. And I looked at the, the, the Honey Nut Cheerio and the milk. And he says, now, you are enjoying this bowl. You're eating this and you're enjoying this bowl of cereal. And he says, why do you think you're enjoying this cereal? Because I'm like, well, you know, it's honey nut Cheerios. <laughs> and he says, would you eat the same thing if it was unprocessed? So he showed me an analogy of a bowl with a big cow and a bunch of grain in it. And he said, would you eat that? And I said, no. And he says, where did milk come from? A cow. Where does the honey nut cereal come from? Grain. He says, but why won't you eat the cow and the grain? And I said, ah, I don't, it wouldn't be enjoyable if I eat it before it's processed. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. So, unfortunately, this has been one of the issues most people who have shared their wisdom with me said. They said, I wasn't ready. The man was not processed as a honey nut Cheerio yet. He was still grain when she got him. <laughs> and when he said I do to her, she was a cow. And I ain't talking about size. <laughs> I don't know why he write me notes. He, 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 he grabbed, now watch this. In the cow is the thing he need, but the timing was off in process and preparation. So I could have got married at 20. I was actually going to. I was about to make a long-term decision. I was about to jump into a bowl with another individual in my early 20s as a cow. <laughs> Inside that cow was the, is, is the man you see today who was supposed to be with that one. So between 20 and 40, y'all got those numbers right, that's 20 years, there was something called preparation. <laughs> it was called, it was called pastor, pasteurizing. This is what they do to cows to get the milk out. So you milking the cow, and, and I'm going through those 20 years like, man, Lord, when you go send her, Lord, please bring her, Lord Jesus. Now I'm 22. When you go bring her, Lord, now I'm 24. When you go bring her, Lord, I'm 26. When you go bring her, Lord, well, now I'm 30. When you go bring her, I'm like, oh, look, my biological clock is ticking, Lord. Come on, you got to send something. Now I'm 35, and I'm like, wait a minute. And guess what? I was being pasteurized the whole time. That by the time she got me, she is now enjoying good milk. <laughs> now watch this the story don't end there because the moment the milk and the honey nut cereal get together they gotta now learn how to share each other in the same bowl that's what we call marriage but before we even get in the bowl there's a process and that's the introduction and most people skip that part and they just dive in the bowl as cows and wheat so that's your chapter one. So it's, there's it's some other analogies in there, but it's to let you understand why people are jumping out of the bowl. Because they went in there. Now, let me ask you this. Is it good 
that you are a honey nut Cheerio and then you still marry a cow? Would it still work? <laughs> it's going to be a, uh, that, that cow going to have a lot of holy oil in his head, right? And guess what? It's still going to make the honey nut Cheerio want to jump out of the bowl. Now you can understand why good people sometimes end up in the divorce. It's not that the good person did something wrong. It's just that they're in there with a cow. Mm -mm -mm. And it's hard to be a honey nut Cheerio in a bowl with a big cow. You are designed to swim in that blessing. But because you grab somebody who wasn't prepared, you stuck in the bowl with somebody who's squishing you in. And then we say the devil's busy. The devil's after my marriage. It really wasn't the devil. It was the fact that I couldn't wait for pastorization. <laughs> so I stopped asking God to send me the person. And I started to say yes to the preparation. What does that preparation look like for me? I had to start to look at me and say, if someone get me today, would they be able to float in my milk? Or would I move them to death? And most people will say, oh, I'm ready to swim. I'm ready to, I'm milk, I'm ready. Until you get in the bowl, and then, until the onion nut cheerio say, wait a minute, something wrong with you. you <laughs> You didn't, you ain't processed correctly. And understand what I'm saying. Process don't mean perfection. It just means you went through a season. Uh, I have to give y'all this. Uh, I, I think this is going to be in the next singles book. Uh, he gave me this uh, called Escaped or Released. And you have two types of singles. You have singles who escape singleness. And do you have singleness who are released from singleness. Let me explain the difference. The single who is released, the single who is released from singleness is the person who endured their time like an inmate. <laughs> and the system says you are free to enter into your new season. You don't have to look over your shoulder. You served your time in prison. Now you can freely go back out in the community and now you, you don't have to look back at your past like, but the escape single they start shoveling holes in their cell. <laughs> they leave the prison before their sentence time. And they are called, uh, they are out loose running around society. <laughs> and guess what? The cops is still looking for them. <laughs> so they really not free because they skip process. Oh, okay, I'm going to let you marinate on that. I'll let you read the rest of that in, in, in intro. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Right. Now, let me bring you to chapter one. Because chapter one is really where I want to start to let this kind of um, <coughs> marinate a little bit. Then, well, be, you know, no, let me do this. Let me, before I give you chapter one, let me just give you one more tidbit with the intro, the process part. Um, I, I do share this a lot, especially when I speak to the young people about relationships and this really helps them. Um, I love Cran apple juice and it's one of my favorite. And I took with me, I didn't bring it today, but I took with me one time a bottle of Cran apple juice and I brought it before the young people and I was like, man, this juice is so good. And I was drinking it in front of them. And when I was drinking it in front of them, I was telling them, I said, y'all tell me why is this juice so good? And pretty much they was like, well, you got good cranberry juice, got good, good uh, apple juice in there. So all I'm doing is benefiting from two juices that went through its individual processes that's now blended. And now, now they're blended, they're creating a new taste. Now watch this. If the cran apple, if the cranberry juice was sour, spoiled, and get in the bottle with a good fresh apple juice, would I still be enjoying it? So, uh, <laughs> number one is you gotta make sure you are a good cranberry juice, alone. Uh-oh, <laughs> this is why singleness is so awesome, cause you got time to become good cranberry juice. 
And you got to trust the apple juice to God because you can't make that person become apple juice. You got to say, Lord, show me where my apple juice is. So by the time you meet the apple juice, y'all just combining juices to create a beautiful new taste called marriage. So you cannot say marriage is the problem. The problem is the two substances that get in it. <laughs> marriage will never be the problem. I'm, I am so clear that marriage is not the problem. So when people, you hear people say marriage is off, tell them you, it's not the marriage. It's the two individuals in it. The institution came from God, so that's a good thing. It's the two, it's the two cows and wheats that be jumping in this thing. And then we blame the institution as if it's its fault. It's just a bowl. And so I try to tell singles, you got to, when I talk about maximizing, it's not talking about staying single as long as you can. It's staying single as long as you can get ready to be juice. Because nobody don't want a sour juice. And I can tell you right now, nobody don't want a sour egg. So if your egg is sour and you, and you scramble with a good egg, that whole scrambled egg is messed up. So this is why you have to see singleness as a blessing. So when I stopped seeing it as a curse and started seeing it as a blessing for preparation, I embraced it. And I was like, man, I started traveling. I had to, I had to have a blast. I was like, man, Lord, I'm good. I, it was getting too good, actually. <laughs> like I said, by the time I met her, I was, I was like, man, I, Lord, I can do this. I, I, I'm liking my cranberry juice. I, li I am liking how you made me. And that's when I met her. I said, isn't that something? <laughs> it wasn't when I was desperate. It's when I was actually saying, I'm good. I, nope. I'm good. I, I love. And, and, and oh, 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 by the way, let me tell you all this little secret. When you go to your supermarket today or tomorrow, go and get, go to the juice section. You go see that cranberry juice has a price of value by itself. It don't even need the apple juice to have a price tag. Oh, that's in another chapter, I'm sorry. I forgot the, I ain't gonna move you to. <laughs> so, so pretty much the, or the apple juice by itself has value. The cranberry juice has value alone. So when they come together, they double the value. All right, y'all ready for chapter one? First chapter is get to know who you really are. In this chapter, I am a huge component to finding your purpose. There's four words I really highlight in this chapter. Um, purpose, assignment, course, and destination. I'm just gonna give you a little bit of those four words just to kind of show you why you, where you should be focusing your attention right now. And let me, let me, let me say this, guys, that um, at some point in our Christian walk, you have to know how, you have to just say, I trust God. Amen. At some point, there's a scripture that says in Proverbs 3 that I love, and I know many of you have heard the scripture, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. What are these paths that he's going to direct? Your life paths. Because when you're in heaven, he, there's not too many paths he'd have to do. That's, that scripture is not for heaven. That scripture is for here. So in your life path, what is one of the most major decisions you go make after salvation? Well, well, true. Who you will marry. So why is it that singles don't involve God in that area? We just love up. Lord, I pray for my job. Direct me to the right job, Lord. Lord, direct me to the right place to live. But when it comes to relationships, I don't want to hear your opinion. Forget that. I'm doing this by myself. I don't need you in that area. I know what I want. And then we get a cow. <laughs> and then, then we wear Pastor Lowe out to pray this cow demon off of us. And he, he's sitting there like, why? Every Sunday you're down here and I'm praying for you. And it has nothing to do. It was because I did not involve God. I am telling y'all, some people argued me to death. I remember there were, there were uh, I've, I've had great men of God who I look up to telling me, God, you better go pick your wife. 
and I know what they meant, but I am telling y'all, I said, I'm, I have tried to pick some. My own understanding tells me I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm going to take a chance to do something different. And I went to God. I said, Lord, you know this woman. I don't know where she at. I said, but this scripture is true. I'm going to just, I'm going to try you with the scripture in the area of directing my path to the right woman. And I get a call to go on a mission trip as a guest. <laughs> I I even said no, because I had ne I'd never been there. And I'm like, I don't know anybody over there. So I would be over there by myself. This is one country I've never been to. So I was kind of reluctant. And in prayer, the Holy Spirit said, go on this trip. I booked the trip for an assignment in ministry. But God was really directing my path to the person. So I'm just pretty much telling you, don't kill yourself, especially for the sisters. You really got to trust God because he going to have to, the guy got to come and find you. So watch this. The day I met her, she didn't want to go to church that day. But her friend said, I think you should go. There's some missionaries coming from the United States and I think you should come. And my wife said, I don't know if I want to go today. And the girl, her friend said, you don't ever know. You may, you know, God may have a special blessing for you. So watch this. So she goes to church for purpose as an interpreter. She goes to the church just to serve, not looking for no man. And when she gets to the church, she meets her blessing. That's called directing paths. So her friend was there to help her get her get on the right path because her blessing was coming. So when your pastor sometimes say, listen, I want you to um, come to church on Saturday and and serve with this. Oh, no, I ain't going to church. I'm, pff, I'm not doing it. You have no idea that could have been a direction for your blessing. <laughs> but I forgot. In that area of relationships, we don't want to involve God. It's like, oh, Lord, I'm not praying about that. We, I'm going to pick this one. And this is why it is over 50% in the church. Because we're picking cows. Yeah. All right, so, so these four words, purpose, assignment, course, and destination. As a single person, please find your purpose, your life purpose. You are here for something. God did not make you and then scratch his head and say, oh, man, what am I going to do with this one? You are here because he was thinking of something. You are here to solve a problem. You want to find that. And why is that important? It's because purpose is going to narrow down your selection. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So can I, can I give you all the number one mic analogy I have to keep that. I think the last time I was here, I used the mic analogies last a couple of years back. So uh, what's the purpose of this microphone I'm talking in? To amplify my voice, right? So we know right now this mic alone has clear purpose. Y'all very clearly can see the purpose. And the mic is actually serving a function. It's helping you to hear. So it's clear. Purpose is clear with this microphone. Now, what happens is when the microphone found its purpose, the manufacturer said, I'm going to now provide a help meet for that. So the manufacturer made something called a mic stand. <laughs> the mic stand was made for who? And I'm going to tell you all how most couples look. purpose, but you're connected to a desk. And God made a stand just for you. But if you don't know that this is your purpose, you ain't going to know that you need a stand. <laughs> so if you don't know that you're a mic, you're going to be like, are you it? <laughs> Wait, maybe, maybe you, because you just are oh, you. So ignorance of purpose is going to make you pick cows. That's why when she arrived, it was almost like, Mike Stan. We started talking, Mike Stan. We start. Now, I couldn't, have, I couldn't have discovered that if I didn't know I was a Mike. 
So find out what your purpose is. And your purpose, when that, when that joker come up to you with all them, with that deep Barry White voice, <laughs> hey, how you doing? Can I get your number? You will look at him and be like, what's your purpose? Forget all that deep voice stuff. What, 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 what is your purpose? And if he, well, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm some flowers. You're going to be like, nope. <laughs> this is how you start to know you ain't mine, you ain't mine, you ain't mine. So purpose really helps you. Yes. All right, so purpose. You, it, but I tell people all the time, I hear people all the time, when I get married, I'm gonna. When I get, I'd be like, are you crazy? You better I'm gonna while you single. <laughs> Because don't wait then and then realize, wait up, you know what, that was a cow. Lord, give me another shot. We, we don't want to keep doing that. We want to get to the place where we get, and, and God has made it so clear. He said, just acknowledge me. I'll, I'll direct your path. Now, let me, let me explain about this directing your path thing. He is not going to force you to marry anybody. He's not going to grab your head and be like, come down. That ain't the type of God we serve. If you hear somebody say, he go for, no, that's not how you work. He just provides you opportunity to meet the mic stand. And what we call discernment has to make your eyes open and say, this is it. Abraham, go to a mountain that I will show thee up. And Abraham just start walking like, oh, there's a lot of mountains out here. <laughs> if he wouldn't went to the wrong mountain, the, the ram in the bush that we all shout about wouldn't have been on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody gonna really die if I would've went to the wrong mountain because I wouldn't have had a replacement. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so that's purpose. The second word is assignment. So once you find your purpose that you're a mic stand, that helps you to um, narrow down the person. Then the next word is assignment. Assignment really shows you the path. It, it pretty much shows you there's something very specific that your teacher is trying to teach you. So let, me, let me, so let me give you one of the number one assignments for singles. And we fail this test a lot. Not you guys, I'm talking about the people who are not here. <laughs> one of the assignments is to keep our sexual purity till marriage. That's an assignment. Now, thank God for second chances. Thank God for his grace and mercy. Thank God for his precious blood. Because before I, before I really sold out to the Lord, I, used to fall, I failed in that area. Many single people have failed in that area. The problem we have is we keep failing in the same area. <laughs> and then we want, we want our mic stand, but we don't want to pass these little assignments. So God was like, why would I give you a mic stand and you're going to abuse the stand before you can use it. Lord, have mercy. Do you know what, how devastated it would have been? Here's a mic stand that God blessed me to get. We, for three, we were together for three years before we got married. Do you know what it, how it, it would feel that she, waited, she was waiting on the Lord, and here I come as a microphone. See a mic stand and before having his blessings to join it, I abuse it before time. She probably, we probably have been married, but guess what? Immediately she would be like, I don't trust you. Because you took away from me something that I was, I was trying to pass this assignment. And if you was really my blessing, you would have helped me pass it. Not bring me down, not make me fail. So another key point, if you want one of your notes, one way you know that you got your blessing is your blessing is going to want you to pass your assignment. <laughs> so sisters, if that brother is like, well, you know, the Lord know we ain't perfect. You know, we can repent in the morning. That is a telltale sign. You better slow your roll. I don't care how handsome that dude is. If he is trying to get in your pants, you better put him up. No, this is, he's, he's, he's about to make me feel an assignment. This is not my mic. Okay, so, the, so assignments is key. So you have to learn how to pass good assignments. The, the third uh, word is course. 
Um, I like course because uh, <laughs> I laugh at this one. And you, in, in the book, I, I, I kind of think this is the part of the book that I had the most fun uh, writing. Because if you don't understand assignments, you won't understand where you're going. God will tell our sister here, listen, I want you to go to New York City. On, and I need you to be there by Monday at 8 o'clock. She's like, yes, sir, I'm going. And um, m m most of you are from Buffalo. So we're, how, which, what direction do I need to take to get to New York City from Buffalo? 90 East. Now, <laughs> so she, she gets in her car. She's excited because she, she sees that she's going to New York City. So... From Buffalo to New York City, there is a course to get her there already before she even start. It's predestined. The 90 East is already ready for her to get there. She gets on there and she sees 90 West. I know there is not a 90 South, but for the analogy, she sees 90 South, 90 East, 90 North. And where the devil now comes in, he says, oh, any of those ways will get you there. And she says, you oh yeah, yeah. So now watch this. She gets on the 90 south, 90 west, going towards California, praying, speaking in tongues, worshiping in the car, going in the wrong direction. <laughs> going in the wrong direction. <laughs> and then... Somewhere in the root will realize, why is it taking me so long to get to what God had for me? <laughs> and so guess what she has to do to get on the right road? I'm going to let y'all tell me. She has to reroute. She lost time, gas, resources just to get to her destination because she was on the wrong course. This is why you better watch, her, your, watch your friends. Because your friends are telling you courses. Girl, you need to go here. Girl, you need to hook up with him. They're trying to take you down 90 South if they're not led by the Lord. I, you, do you know how many people came and told me, you should try this young lady right here. Those, are, those were paths. If I, could, if I did not, as a single man, go back and lock up in prayer and say, Lord, show me my 90 East, please. I don't have time to waste gas and money right now. This is, we're too late in the game for these, you know. So what I'm saying is that course is so important, but how do we know that? Course is key. First, you gotta know your purpose. Then you gotta start passing the assignments you already have. And then you gotta be clear on where God is trying to take you. And then that brings us to the fourth word, destination. Destination is where you're gonna end up. The scripture talks about, I, I, I have a, a good end. I see a good end for you. He was talking to Jeremiah. He says, I see, it's, it's something good at the end I see for you. That's where I want you to go. And watch this. In your path to this destination, to New York City, you're going to see a bunch of service stations along the way. And I put this in the book, that on your way from Buffalo to New York, I promise you, you go find some gas stations to get fueled up along the way. But you know what most single people do? <laughs> they stop at the first gas station and say, I'm here. Ooh, thank you, Jesus, I've arrived. God is like, no, New York City is where I need you. So watch this. Your mate is not New York City. Your mate is the service stations to New York City. Mm -mm -mm. So don't get to the, don't get to, and I, I think I put it in a book about when they used to have the Popeye's chicken down on the 90 East. Y'all know that place at. And I, we used to, I used to love stopping at that little, that little, little pit stop back in the day. And I'm like, man, this three-piece chicken is so good. But guess what? I had to get back in the car with the chicken. And most of us get the chicken. We're like, I'm going back to Buffalo now. Lord, forget your will. I got my blessing. So you better just look at you. That is a three-piece chicken out there. I'm, I'm, babe, you know I ain't got no chicken, but <laughs> that is my <laughs> piece of chicken out there. And guess what? Now I got the chicken. Yay. But guess now where I got to go? 
I got to get back en route with the chicken to New York. So don't look at your mate as the dead end. This is where people blow it. Perfect example, uh, I think you say you're widowed, right? Now, if the mate is the dead end, when her husband passed, she would have been done. She would have arrived to her destination. God still got her here. So the mate was the Popeye's chicken for her. So God is now still requiring her to get to New York. <laughs> I hope this is helping. Because too many people have said marriage is the destination and I'm trying to tell people, stop it, it ain't. So in singleness, this is what, that reality makes things so much clearer every day, all right? So let me uh, give you this and then we're gonna take a little break. I hope you, you guys enjoying this so far. I pray it's, I pray it's helping you. All right, let me give you this and then we're gonna uh, take a quick break. Um, the se in the second chapter, there's more in, in chapter one, so please read that and let the, this book bless you. And a lot of the stuff I'm sharing too is on these seminars. Okay, remember it's, it's about 40 hours of stuff on here. Okay, uh, get, uh, chapter two is get healed from all your past soul ties and past hurts. Now in this one, I talk about baggage limit and I was sharing about when I went to the airport and I was all happy, I was just putting stuff in my suitcase and I was ready to fly and, and, and the lady was like, um, you went over the baggage limit. And I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute, what? Uh, she was like, you gotta pay uh, extra because you went past, and I'm like, and I'm at the airport, like, I, I wasn't ready to pay extra. <laughs> and she said, well, we have a limit before you get on this plane. And unfortunately, you put too much in that suitcase before you started this journey. So guess what I had to do, y'all? I either had to pay for extra or unload some stuff. And at the time, I wasn't really financially blessed, so y'all can already know what I had to do. <laughs> I had to look at my friend who dropped me off and say, hey, I need you to take a couple of stuff and just leave it in your car until I get home. And I started put, taking stuff out of the bag that I really didn't need for the trip. Uh-oh. So during singleness, in your future relationship, there is a limit, an emotional limit. There's a baggage limit. And God says, I don't need you to go past 50. In order for you to get on this airplane and y'all enjoy it, you're going to have to get rid of everything in your suitcase before going into this plane. <laughs> so there's some stuff in those emotions. There's some stuff from that past that if you don't unload from that suitcase, you go affect the people on the plane. Mm -mm -mm. That was a hard one for me. I'm going to be honest. I didn't want to write that chapter in the book. <laughs> I wanted to skip to the juicy, good stuff, and I had to deal with some pain I had because I was very, I experienced a lot of things in my past, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, Lord, you know, this is, I mean, that's going to take me forever to get rid of all this stuff. And he's like, well, that's what I'm here for. I'm, I'm here to help you. Just cast these kids. And I began to start unpacking. I was unpacking um, relationships that just, I, I mean, I, I, don't, I lived such a crazy life when I was in my teens, just doing stuff. I, I had to literally, one of the ways I had to unpack, I wrote down, and I don't know if y'all want to do this, but I wrote down every person I was with, um, intimately with. I wrote their names down on a piece of paper. Some names I remember, some I didn't. But it was a lot of names. And I wrote all, I had to look, it was the hardest thing to do because I didn't want to revisit. And I wrote all those names down, y'all, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I had to look and I asked God to forgive me. I had to, I was calling names out. And I'm like, Lord, forgive me for little. And I started feeling my soul getting lighter because I, I confronted, I wasn't running. I was facing, I said, no, I don't wanna bring this into this airplane. So I'm unpacking this at the airport now before I connect in my airplane out there. She don't deserve that. So in my singleness, I was working on unpacking. And it's sometimes unforgiveness. Sometimes you have a grudge with somebody. I mean, I had, I mean, I, I had some unforgiveness that I had to deal with because you know, of, of some pain I went through. And I, I wasn't willing to work with that. I was just like, Lord, you, you, know, you know my heart. And I'm just gonna keep moving. <laughs> but no, I had to confront that. I had to actually pray for the person. I just, it was, and it was funny because, I, and I knew God heard me because you know what happened? <laughs> you know what happened, Sister Lynn? 
After I wrote that list out, guess what happened in the next maybe four months? I started seeing every person on that list. I would walk in the mall, see a person, they, hey, remember? I'm like, oh Lord, what's going on? <laughs> and now somebody tell me why you think I had to see them. For the healing process, but what do you think they did for me personally? Because how do I know I'm over them unless I confront it? I rather have seen them before than after. Because most people are like, oh, I don't want to see, I don't want to see that person no more. You, you know what? Look the person, you, you should be able to, and look at them and say, Lord, I thank you. I didn't make this mistake. That's how you know it's like, you, you don't want it in your suitcase no more. If you confront it and you still contemplate and taking it on a plane with you, you still need a little healing in that one. And it was hard. I'm going to be honest. It was very hard because there was something I didn't want. But, I'm, but I'm, there was some that I saw. I said, Lord, what was I thinking? I'm like, Jesus, I was, what was wrong with me? I'm like, was I drunk, Lord? What was going on? Like, what was, I was, I had to really, and I was cracking myself up because I didn't realize. I'm like, what was, what was going on in that season of my life that I, I mean, some of the ones that I thought I would, I, I just had to be with them. Now I'm looking at them. I'm like, you know, 15 kids, 16 baby dad. I'm like, no, Lord Jesus, no. <laughs> Father, have mercy. <laughs> and I'm up here about to cry, getting all emotional for that. And God had this. If I would have stayed at the airport with that luggage and got stubborn. Now watch this. I could have got stubborn and paid for the extra baggage. So now I'm on the plane. I'm married. But guess what's still in my suitcase? So I paid an extra price to keep junk. Now the airplane is wall wobbly. Okay, maybe that's a bit too much. So, <laughs> yeah. Whew. I am telling y'all, that has been one of the game changers for me. Learn to get healed. Learn to go back and ask the higher question. I'm telling you, is the, you're going to know, you're going to feel so much lighter. And I am not saying, again, that you're going to be perfect. I'm just saying that the airplane ride is so much enjoyable with stuff you don't need. And sometimes you just have to accept it. He don't want you no more. You have to just accept it and just say, he don't, so stop still checking on his Facebook page. You don't need that no more. He's done. Yes, he has somebody else he's got his arm around. Accept it and move on and say, Lord, I thank you for getting that out my suitcase. <laughs> Next time you see the person post with their new some whoever, say, Lord, bless them. Lord, I pray that she's the one for him. You gonna start feeling like, man, my suitcase is getting, you don't wanna be looking under there talking about, her? How did he pick her over me? No, he's still in your suitcase. <laughs> he's still in there. <laughs> so the quicker you unpack, the quicker, the better, all right? So um, I'll give you this, and then let's take our break, because uh, it's, it's um, getting. So I always share about the reference points. Um, and I share this in the book as well, that you want to get to the place where um, you understand the power of reference points. Reference points is a powerful thing. I use it everywhere I go. When I go to a new city, I'm always looking for areas that connect me to a certain um, region of the city. So when I go to Tennessee, if I go to California, if I go somewhere, I'm like, I know I'm near, I'm know I'm, I know I'm near here because I see that building. And what reference points does is it connects you to something, even though you don't live there. You can, you automatically, as soon as you see this, you get the sense of, I know where I'm at. You got to know your reference points. So this is an assignment you want to do. You want to know that every person who did not wait, who, who did not keep their virginity, who did not keep their emotional uh, wholeness, you want to know that there's some reference points there. So whoever your first sexual experience was, was with, that was a reference point, meaning they expose you to something, 
that now when you think of this word, sometimes that person comes to mind because they are your reference point. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? You want to start to look at things that you connect with because, again, if you're trying to go into this new season, this new area, you want to start looking at these reference points because these reference points, if you're not careful, you will be in a new city. You would be in Tennessee now in the place God had for you, and you're looking for reference points from L.A. Mm, I don't know if I want to go a little deeper today. <laughs> so you in Tennessee, and you're looking for L.A. buildings. <laughs> you in Tennessee, and now watch this, you can't even enjoy Tennessee because your reference points is so connected to L.A. that Tennessee is here saying, hey, enjoy my beautiful new city, and you so focused on your past ref reference points. And that has messed so many people up. So in the get to know who you really are, you want to understand these things, and, get, and, and I'm sorry, and getting healed from your past soul ties and past hurts. These are the things that you really want to work on. Start looking at reference points. Start saying, Lord, help me to divorce myself from the things that I used to lean on so much in my past so I could be prepared for my future.